About a year ago, a former graduate student of mine, let's call him Dion, Dion accepted a mid-level management job at a global investment bank. Now, Dion's new role was to conduct research on targeted companies in particular sectors of the market. He had to aggregate this analysis and put together what are called pitch books. Now, for those of you who don't know, pitch books are analytical reports that are used to sell pieces of companies to investors. Dion hit the ground running and was doing phenomenal work. Of course, the skills he learned at Columbia University certainly prepared him very well. Anyway, Dion was producing great work, he was a rising star in his division, and he was being singled out as a top performer amongst his peers. However, and now here's where it gets interesting, even though he was being universally praised, Dion found himself disenchanted with his job. And this was after just one year. He didn't like it, he didn't want to stay anymore, he quit. Does this sound familiar? Now, meanwhile, right around this same time, Dion's boss, let's call her Camille, she reached out to me. She wanted leadership advice on how to motivate Dion and the other junior bankers on her team. She wanted to know how to keep them engaged, how to keep them from leaving. At one point she said to me, Jason, I don't understand. I've hired this talented group. We've given them the best training. They have access to endless resources. Collectively, we're performing well as a team. We're absolutely crushing all of our metrics. The firm's brand is revered around the world. Everybody wants to work here. She said, yes, I'm asking them to work hard, but from a competitive standpoint, I'm paying them a ton of money. So help me understand, she said, what's the problem? I'll ask all of you, what's the problem? And if you know that answer, what's the solution? I'll give you a starter hint, which you can probably already guess. Dion, he's a millennial. And Camille, well, she is not. Some of you tonight are thinking a lot has been written about and spoken about millennials over the last several years. And to you, the topic is it's just played out. It's a bunch of hoopla. Why are we still talking about millennials? You'd say that good foundational leadership practices work for you and they should work for everyone. You know, those basic practices, develop a strategy and a plan, effectively communicate the goals and expectations of that plan, allocate necessary resources, implement it for maximum return, Evaluate impact and then rinse and repeat the whole cycle. This is what I call the old school approach. Millennials don't need or deserve anything special. They just need to get with the program which has worked for decades. And they need to stop causing trouble with all of that extra. Am I right? You all would say that the Dion and Camille scenario is just a leadership challenge, but not a millennial thing. If Dion wants to leave, let him leave. Next person up. Now others of you here tonight, you disagree. You recognize the millennial generation as a unique force in the future world of work. And you recognize them because they're the single largest generation in the workforce right now, and they will be for years to come. They're increasingly being promoted into leadership roles and soon they'll be calling all the shots. And just like every up and coming younger generation throughout time, they have a different way of understanding the world. They grew up in a very different context than your elders, than all of you. So leading them is a complex challenge, but it's not worth dismissing. And so you others believe in what I call the new school approach. Now in this approach, leaders kind of have to bend backwards to accommodate the millennial specific needs. In doing so though, you win the war for talent. You all would say that the Dion and Camille scenario is actually a millennial thing. They do need a different kind of leadership to be satisfied and productive. So who's right? Is it the old school approach, which millennials sarcastically refer to as hashtag, okay boomer, where they're essentially dissing you for not being relevant and just not getting it? Or is the right answer the new school approach, where older generations open the door to change because they absolutely have to? Well, I'm here to say that you're both right. On the one hand, millennials are truly a unique generation, more unique in terms of workplace dynamics than any generation has ever been. But on the other hand, certain core leadership strategies can be applied to the unique needs of the millennial generation for absolute success. To better understand this and to help Camille, we can talk about my three C's for leading millennials, coaching, culture, and causes. So the number one C, coaching. Leaders need to engage in constant coaching. You all need to be coaching all the time. We already know from leadership research that all workers, no matter their job, benefit from feedback. But the practice of providing continuous feedback and guidance, that's what millennials crave. In fact, 
Studies show that leaders can't spend enough one-on-one -on -one time with them, which is part of the generational tension. Older generations tend to value autonomous productivity. Come back to me when it's done. Younger generations want to clarify and then re-clarify their assignments. They want feedback on performance at incremental stages of their task. How am I doing? How am I doing? They're just very eager to learn from their leaders and take full advantage of the mentor relationship. They ask questions like, what would you do if this happened? How might I approach this differently? And much to the disdain of many leaders, they also want to give you all feedback. They want the opportunity to highlight areas where leaders might improve and might grow. So whereas previous generations may have dutifully taken in the commands, worked independently, and kept their heads down and mouths shut, millennials thrive in a business environment where coaching is constant, and the pathways for frequent exchanges of learning back and forth, they're always open. Now, Dion wants constant coaching so he can regularly validate his performance. And this is not just at the end of the year during the annual review period. He wants the benefit of an open mentorship. Camille, on the other hand, is satisfied with Dion just doing his job. She sees a constant coaching responsibility as a burden, and she certainly doesn't want any feedback from him. From her perspective, she's paid her dues by operating in a restrictive hierarchy over a long period of time. Now it's his turn to do the same thing. And so ultimately, Dion just wants constant coaching. And Camille just wants him to leave her alone. But if she coaches him, he'll be happier. He'll be much more productive, and he'll stay. Isn't that what it's all about? Number two C, culture. Leaders need to create a culture of now. You all need to create a culture of now. And by now, I mean embracing the realities of the 21st century, which is diverse and dominated by technological systems. All workers, all of us, see the value in a strong organizational culture. But what does that really mean? What will bind employees in a way that's actually productive? Well, for millennials, it starts with creating environments that reflect society, which means more diverse environments. Recent research proves that diverse work cultures benefit the bottom line. It's undeniably good for business. And it's good for business because consumers and clients are increasingly diverse. Yet when cultures lack diversity, they're not only losing money, but they're losing valuable people. Millennials don't want to work in those homogenous environments. And then the second aspect of culture that millennials want is a place that optimizes performance and productivity. In other words, being flexible in a way that doesn't waste time operating in some rigid structural framework. That approach worked better in the past. Come into the office, wear a tie, sit at your desk and be seen, hold and attend lots of meetings, send files back and forth with endless revisions. You know, busy work, conforming to those old fashioned norms. And the millennials say, ugh, you know, I don't wanna do that. They want an upgrade on that type of style to make work more efficient so they can spend time on other aspects of life. Research also proves that flexible work arrangements and creative work systems are not just one-way perks and not just opportunities to get out of work. When structured correctly, they allow people to maximize their time inside and outside of the office so they can accomplish more and create a work-life balance that's good for the employer and good for the employee alike. So related to culture, Dion's environment is not diverse and it's actually trending the opposite direction. And he's pretty much required to be at his desk all the time, and he has to be available online during off hours. In his mind, he isn't working with the mix of people he wants, and he's feeling like he needs to be always on, and he doesn't want to be always on. Does Camille lead a culture of now or a culture of then? To be fair to her, her early career experiences have been much different than Dion's. On the diversity front, throughout her career, she operated in homogenous environments and just plowed through it with the mantra, hey, it is what it is. And with respect to balance, She's been always on for her whole career. So it's understandable that on both fronts, Camille expects Dion to just suck it up. But if she makes the cultural adjustment, she and her whole team will be exponentially more successful. Isn't that the goal? Number three C, causes. Leaders today need to commit to cause positioning. How are you positioning yourself and your organizations relative to the cause issues of today? It used to be that political issues and value-based ideologies were mostly left out of the workplace. Nobody really talked about it. More and more, though, it's now intertwined in the office. Millennials certainly want to talk about social issues. They want to talk about it in their personal lives, and they want to talk about it in their professional lives. Issues such as border control and immigration, gun legislation, climate change, same-sex unions, and police community relations, they're all being discussed around the water cooler, and even more on social media. 
And so millennials expect the organization they work for to take an external position on at least one cause. They want to work at a place and proudly tweet about that place that boldly stands for something. And they want it to be done in an authentic way. It's not just about the marketing the company and helping them make more money. And going one step further, they also want organizations to actually give them a platform and ideally resources to voice their own passions. Now beyond the organization, they want their leaders, they want all of you to do this yourselves too. What's important to you? What causes do you support? Today, an authentic leader is fearless about bringing their full self to work and representing their values. Authentic leaders are trustworthy people, committed people who will stand up and fight for a better society. Dion isn't experiencing his firm taking a position on any particular cause. They manage transactions, they broker deals, they make a bunch of money, but they don't participate in the social dialogue and they really don't support him with his own causal interests. Likewise, Camille doesn't demonstrate authentic support on any issue herself. In fact, she thinks it's inappropriate to do so. During her time of growing up in the firm, the best professionals never spoke about politics or religion or relationships. They kept their work and their life separate. So to Camille, Dion's interest about causes is out of bounds. But once again, if she takes the opportunity to adapt her leadership style, she'll win. So leaders, let me ask you, what have you learned? You've learned about the millennials' unique and powerful position in the future of work. You've learned how to effectively lead these millennials using the three C's, coaching, culture, and causes. And you've learned to recognize that what was true for you when you were young professionals reflects a different era and a different reality. Times have changed. Millennials function in communities that are more diverse, more socially active, more technologically and systems driven, more collaborative, and less hierarchical. I encourage each of you to look through an alternate lens. If you do, you will lead millennials to their greatest potential.